Okay, so you know what to do usually. You can make a calculator. But what was if you want to make better stuff? Bigger, better, stronger? Like, what was if we want to make better stuff? Well, we can't just do that with one thing. We need multiple. That's why I'm about to tell you what why we include this. What is this? So what this does is it basically says, Hey, we're going to be using this library. What is a library? A library is like built-in code. It's not, it's not as easy as the code you or me have done. It's like really complicated code. And we have multiple libraries. It's like really complicated block chunks of codes. So like for instance, hold on. So I just need to add system pause. System pause. Really complicated. So if we actually added another library, which I want to which to add another library, it's called include. And then if you type the backwards arrow, these are all the libraries you could add. And each of them add different kinds of code, so you don't see a C, C out that we've been using throughout this course. That comes from IO Stream. If you didn't have this line of code in, you would not be able to use C out, C in. So yeah, what we're looking for, however, is C time. C time. I actually, I actually duplicated it. I don't know how. C time is all about the time. And I'm going to just give you one example of how you can use this to generate a random number. To generate a ran random number, you want to just put rand. And done! I just want to place rand. Uh, again, it's not showing anything, cuz, can you guess why? Well, if you said we didn't print it out to the screen using CL, you're correct! Forty-one! Look at that! But what if I just want the numbers between 0 and 10? Well, I can add modulus maximum. So what this modulus maximum does is it tells the rand, hey, don't ever go above this number. So now, obviously, I get 1. Nice. But what if I don't want it to go to 0? Because it can. Well, I'll add 1 plus one. So this is telling the rand, hey, don't ever go below this number. And we get two. Nice. Let's keep going. And we get two. And we get two. And we get two. What? Well, if I just do a quick for loop, Int i equals zero, i is less than ten, i plus plus. If I do a quick for loop, I can actually see multiple values. So here we got this number, so let's see the first four. Two, eight, five, one. How about that? Two, eight, five, one. Oh wow, must be really lucky. Two okay, nope, something's gone wrong. Why is it always two eight five one, you may ask? Well, it's because RAN doesn't work the way you would expect it. It takes a value, we could say. It has a set number of values. It never changes. To change it we have to add S Rand. And it's giving an error. Why? Because it takes a certain a uh, certain, like, how would you compile it? So, 6110. Nice. And 6110 again. And we can keep going. I, I don't know, what will I get if I get 12? If I put in 12? Like, what will I get? 
893, wow. Well, what about, um, 78? You know, this is good for some programs. Bombs, if you want true random. Four eight eight seven three nine. Look at that! It randomized. What is this going on with this time zero? Well, time zero is basically saying what's the current time? Like, what's the current time? Like, every second is getting a new way to to compile itself into new randomness. So it's taking the time and then make and then changing the randomizer to fit the time. So I don't know what I'll get. One night three. So this can be useful for gam for games like uh, casino games. Where you want true randomness randomness. And it's pretty fun. You'll see actually this being used a lot if you make a lot of games in C. But, um, yeah, this was a pretty short video, so subscribe to me if you want to see more coding videos, or if you're more into gaming videos, I have those too. Like this video if you liked it, and I'll see you all in the next video.